Hope you guys. Oh, we have some people. Hey, you you Maybe just mute, mute yourself. Stop <laughs> Oh, can we mute Abula Kim? Yeah, let's mute. Let's mute some people. Yeah. So I hope everyone can hear me. Okay, so if you can hear me, can I see some chat in the group that you can hear me? Okay, yes, Michael said, Mike, thanks, thanks, Mike. Yeah, okay, thanks, 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 everyone. Thanks once again. So I want to welcome everyone to today's session. And yeah, so I want to welcome everyone again to another beautiful session we are having, uh, which is No Code AI, it's the masterclass. And so before we start, I would share my screen and then we can pick it up from there. Okay. So welcome everyone to today's master's class, which is no code AI master class. And then, yes. And then so throughout today, I will be talking about no code, how no code can be used in the application of AI and how as a data scientist, you don't have to rely too much on writing codes. And for those of you that are just starting and you're an expert, a subject expert in a, in a particular area, let's say, for example, you're a teacher, you're a banker, you're a lawyer, and you like your profession, and you don't want to leave it and then start learning Python and uh, Python and uh, our programming or learning programming in a row from scratch or and you still want to apply uh, ai to your particular field this is the class for you this is the class for you so if you are interested in that particular area this is the class you have to be so about using no code applying no code and then using it in your field your current field and seeing immediate result so this particular class was brought to you by Data Scientist Network, formerly known as DSN. So I would do a quick introduction of DSN later, but I'm sure most of you are already familiar with who we are and what we do at Data Scientist Network, formerly known as Data Science Nigeria, formerly known as Data Science Nigeria. So, so the agenda for today's class, the agenda for today's class is, number one will be, okay, just hold on a bit. Okay, yeah, sorry for that short, uh, that short break in transmission. We needed to correct some technical issues we are having, but now we are back. So the agenda for the, today's meeting, number one, I'll be introducing who we are, Data Scientist Network, DSN. 
And then we'll do a revision of last class. For those of you that didn't attend last class, don't be bothered at all. Just a quick recap. I'm sure you'll be able to pick it up. Right? You'll be able to continue with us for those of you just joining. For those of you that attended last class, this will just be like a quick revision for you. For those of you just joining also, I would make sure I take everyone along. And then the assignment I gave last class, I'll do like a quick introduction to that also, which can also help. And then we'll do also a new use case study. And then I'll give you a capstone project, which is not something big, it's capstone, but it's not, it's not big. Within uh, 10 minutes, if you see that we teach people to, to be able to complete it. And then I'll tell you how to submit and that. So let's, so let's start. Let's start with this class. Okay. Yeah. So uh, for those of you that know who you are, uh, so DSM before we, we had a vision, we are committed to raising 1 million AI talent, but over the time, our vision has evolved to include creating a community for learning and research. And also we've gone into product development for social impact, not just any kind of product, for social impact. And then also we are focusing on partnership for solution delivery, reaching out to other people within the community, within the tech space, within the market space, in order to create a system that works for both. And these evolutions have uh, helped us into going learning and community, which we are doing now, research and social good applications. You, I'm sure some of you must have heard about some of our products and some of them are launching this year and early next year also. Also, we've had a lot of co corporate support and solution deployment with big brands within the tech space, within the government space, and within the NGO space. And also we've done a, a bit of startup partnership and national development. And these are some of the awards we've gotten over the years. Uh, the Mataya Impact Award 2019. And also we've done uh, academic poster. Yes. And then we've also uh, DSN X Prize, that was last year. And these are some of our work we presented in the global space by our founder. And then we also have a book called The Beginners, Artificial Intelligence and Python Programming. For those of you that have interest or you have young ones that will be interested or that you know will be interested in programming, this is one of like the best material there to start with. And then we have DSN has a dedicated AI lab up in Yaba also which you are all invited to come and join and see some of the incredible things you are doing. And also meet some of our staffs also, in case you have a solution or you have an issue that you like us to discuss about, you're also here to help. And these are some of our products that I've talked about, getting global recognition and our business model also that I've spoken about. And our incubation participants, in case you're a startup and you're looking for a place to start, DSN is a place where you have an incubator, reach out to us at DSN or come to our office at Yaba and then we can put you through. And then these are some of our boards. And for those of you that would like to join our community, for those of you that would like to join our community, this is a place to start, just go to www.dsnindia.org slash AI community. We have a lot of things going on. We have the no code, we have DSN, we have AI for professionals, we have AI for teachers, called AI enabled teachers. Also we have AI for kids and things also. So our community is large and no matter which particular group you are, whether you're just starting or you're an expert or you don't even want to code at all, or you are looking for partnership, just uh, come to our community and then we'll be able to set you up. So that is that, how I DSN. So can I just see some claps in the group and uh, excitement in the chat? 
for that, for the vision and impact that DSN have done over the years. So thanks everyone. So we'll be doing like a quick revision of last class. And then from there, we'll move into what we have to today, a revision. And then I'll do a quick solution of our last class assignment. And then from there, we'll come on to what we have for the day. So uh, last class, we talked about what artificial intelligence is as we all. And we said the term artificial intelligence is not a new term, even though is uh, a lot of people are hearing about it uh, recently. I just hearing about it recently. It's it's been the journey. So artificial intelligence has been a journey from people who envision that computers should be able to have a form of intelligence to us in the current age building big models that can uh, translate uh, text from one language or another, or uh, that could detect if someone has cancer or not, and some of the black applications. So it's it's been a journey. So, and then for you that are just coming in, don't feel intimidated, intimidated by the time you hear the big words and everything. Gradually, gradually, with, develop, with training and consistency, you, you get there and kind of know uh, the journey also. And then we talked about some of the black applications. We talked about self-driving cars that we've heard of. We talk about voice assistants that we have on our phones. For those of you that have phones, I'm sure you'll have heard about uh, OK Google, or for those of you that have iOS devices, Siri, and different, different kind of uh, voice assistants. We also talk about price, dynamic pricing. For those of you that shop on online shopping, like Jumia, Conga, you know that sometimes the price fluctuates based on where you are, your location, or who you are as a person. Maybe this is your, this is your first time shopping at that platform, or maybe uh, you're a teacher, and then they are giving a pool for teachers and all those things. Those can be done using AI also. It does not matter that it must be AI, but they can be done using AI. And another one is email featuring, like, you know, for those of you that have Gmails, uh, some email will be classified as spam, some not spam. Some will classify as into your inbox, some will classify as promotional, some will classify as social. All this is not that there's someone at the back end looking through your emails and say, okay, I think this is spam, so let me mark it as spam and things like that. No, this is this does not work that way. It's an AI system that works at the back end. And then once the email comes through, look for some of the key features that makes an email a spam. Maybe promising you a reward, a monetary reward or things like that. So those are some of the key features and then the AI will pick those up and then we'll classify that this is a spam, this is not a spam. And also one other area I would like to uh, uh, speak to, which will be also be discussing, which will be a part of your capstone project is fraud detection. Using AI for fraud detection and it's about being able to classify, okay, uh, is is this transaction for the length or not? And things like that. So it's one interesting aspect also that AI is being used for. And then I, I also mentioned that there are different, uh, under AI, AI is a broad term, quite a very broad and very uh, broad term. So there are different classes, subclasses under AI. We have the machine learning, we have the deep learning, and then we have the neural networks also. And some, some will also give you different classification, but just know that AI is a broad term and it encompasses a lot of uh, things. But for this particular class, we will only be focusing on number one, machine learning and under machine learning also we'll be focusing on supervised learning. So just know that AI, under AI we have machine learning, which we'll be focusing for, for this class. And machine learning can be subdivided into two, three, or four, depending on the textbooks you look at. But for this class, we'll only be looking at three classes. Sorry about that. We'll be looking at the supervised learning, the unsupervised, and then the reinforcement learning. Those are the three groups of machine learning we will be looking at. Uh, no, we'll be talking about briefly, but the one we'll be looking at in-depthly is the supervised learning. 
And I said that the key features of a supervised learning is that the data that we are using to train the machine learning model must have some key parameters. That's how we know whether we are using a supervised or, or an unsupervised or a reinforcement learning, if the case is that. And then, but the data determines the types of machine learning model you use, whether supervised or unsupervised. Now, for supervised learning, I told you that, like I said, that the data determines. And what is the data? For those of you that are not familiar with what the data means, so data is just any thing or any substance that you can you can introduce or you can uh, what's it called or that you can pass it into your computer system into an electronic device. It can be classified as data. Any information or any input that your system can take in can be called a data. So, for example, you are typing and characters are appearing on your screen. That is a form of data. We call that text data. Is a data you are typing with your phone. Is a text data. You record your voice. That's an audio data. It's also a data, right? So, data is anything that you can pass in. Let's say, for example, you snap pictures, your images. So do that data also. So you record all those ones to image data. So you can see I'm going that whatever input that you can uh, give your system is what we call uh, data. And we say for you to build the supervised learning, you have to divide your data into two parts. You have what you call your training data and your test data. Now, AI in general is just like imputing a form of intelligence in a machine learning system, imputing a form of intelligence in a machine learning system. And when you are imputing a form of intelligence, you have to be able to know, number one, you have to train the AI model so that you know what to do. And then number two, you have to be able to test it to see whether it's performing based on what better is performing well based on what you informed it to do initially now so you need two different kind of data for that one they are the same data but you have to split them into two your trained data will be used to train your model just like a teacher in a class you uh, give the student examples and say okay one plus one equals two three plus four equals seven different kind of examples so that the student can grab the understanding of addition subtraction and division in a sense now after training that particular uh, student over a period of two or three weeks then you give that student a test to see okay based on all what i've trained you did you perform well and then from there you'll be able to evaluate okay this is where the student is deficient this is what i need to uh these are some of the areas i think i can help that student improve and so that. so the same example is what we are bringing into machine learning as a whole so we train our model but the beauty of uh a computer system is you don't have to train it for six months or three months you train your model within two or three uh hours maximum for those of you that do that work with big data in a sense you train for, for these classes, we just train our model for like 10 seconds or, uh, or one minute at most. So we train our model. And then from there, we train it to the train data set. So after training our model, we give it the test data set to test it to see uh, the, the level of performance of our model. And then from there, we'll be able to see, okay, is our model doing well or not? If it's doing well, you say, okay, that is good, then you can deploy it into production. But if it's not doing well, then you have to retrain it. You have to find out why. You have to see where the model is deficient. And you have to see, you have to take some steps in order to help improve the accuracy or the performance of your model in general. So that's the train and test. And also your data set for it to be supervised must have two particular types. It must have a feature and a label. So let me explain this. A feature is the key attribute of your data set. The label is the outcome, is what that particular data set represents. Okay, let's say, for example, 
you have an image of a boy and a girl. So what are the features, what are the key attributes that makes a person a boy or that makes someone else a girl? Okay, you say for a boy, uh, he must have a broad chest. Uh, naturally, they are more taller than girls. They have uh, the, the length of their hair is not as long as girls. So, so these are some of the key attributes, uh, the key features of your data that I mentioned. Now the label is, okay, based on this attribute, what is the outcome? Is the person a boy or a girl? And then one other, uh, so features are just what the key attributes of your data, why labels are the outcome. So for uh, tabular data in which we'll be working with, you see that your, your features are your columns, and then we have a label there that that's what we are trying to predict. Like these images we have here, our labels is the shape, hexagon, triangle, and square. And in here, we have all the features. You know what differentiates a square from an hexagon and things like that. And then one last thing also, the two important things you have to be able to do with your model, you have to train it and then make prediction. Prediction is that we are seeing how good, testing to see how good it's performing. To see how good it's performing. Okay. Yeah. So um, now let's uh, move on to the next slide. Now, so we're talking about the solution to the assignment in which I gave uh, in the last class. So last class, for those of you that were not with us, last class we introduced a platform called BigML, which I'll also be doing uh, when I'm talking about this assignment. And then we uh, train a model that can predict student performance. That means I can look at the data of some particular student and then predict whether based on this data that this particular student is exhibiting, whether the, best, the student will be able to do well or not. So that was the use case we discussed last class. So for those of you that are just joining, let's just go to this link, download the data set, and then you can uh just follow along with me as i prepare the solution for last class and also if you have some particular questions i can let me just take them now before before uh, i go into the solution for this class so i'm checking Okay, someone was asking when was the last class? The last class was uh, two weeks ago. Okay, someone's asking for the link. So, uh, so my colleague will do that. They will drop the link. So, but let me also just type it to the air. Okay, so if you have any questions before we go, just let me know, and then I would attend to it. So I've dropped the link on the chat for those of you that, that were asking for you. So why do, someone is asking, why do we perform train test splits? Train test split. So train test split is when we split our model into our training data and our test data. Like I've informed you earlier, when we split our model into our training and our test data. And I told you that, uh, and I told you that, and I told you the reason why we need the trained data and our test data. The trained data is to train the model. The test data is to test the performance of the model. Someone is asking how many class have we held so far? So just one class. So last class does not hinder this class. Just know that it's, it's not a determinant at all. Last class does not determine whether uh, you follow along with this class or whether, uh, whether you've missed anything, no. 
It's just a use case uh, we, we are discussing throughout. Once you understand how to use the platform, which is the most important thing, I think you'll be able to flow along uh, no matter uh, no matter where you meet us in the particular class. So for uh, so last week we introduced BigML. This week also we'll talk about BigML. The next upper class we'll be having will be using another no code tool entirely. You should understand that the importance of this class is uh, no code. That means introducing no code platform that can help you simplify your work and that can make you more efficient in the whole. So that is that. So yeah, so the uh, the class will be available on YouTube for those of you that are asking, and I'm sure my colleagues will also draw the link for the YouTube uh, for our YouTube channel on this group, so you can also check. Which and also the email will be shared, which will contain those information. So okay, so let's let's uh, let's pause it for that, and then let's move on to the assignment. So we'll be going over to BigML. So for those of you just joining, just follow along. And then I would also be stopping to ask, uh, to answer some of your questions. I'll be also be stopping to answer some of your questions. Yeah. So let's, let's go over to BigML. Okay, so uh, can you see my screen? So I want, I want you guys to indicate if you can see my screen. So for those of you just joining us, just go, just type bigml.com, bigml.com. And then I'll also be uh, adding it in the chat so you can go over and check it out. So to register is quite easy, quite fast. So just be, ml.com and then you can register and see yes uh, yeah so for those of so you can sign out here you can sign in for me let me just increase the size of my screen and be yes so you can you can sign in over here and then you can pick an English, you can sign out. Let me sign out for those of us that are just joined. So we okay, so you can sign in with whether GitHub, Google, this sign up. Sorry, you can sign up with GitHub or Google. I'm sure most of us have a Google account or you can just register and everything like that. So I am signing in with my Google account. Yeah. Okay, so once you sign in, uh, it's loading. I think it's taking a while, just here with us. Mm -hmm. Hmm. That's taking longer than necessary. Uh, let me load the page.
so it's complaining about and for me let me just hold on please big ml.com okay yeah i don't know why it was displaying like that. maybe it was my internet over here so you can click on click, go to your dashboard and then from your dashboard then you'll be then you'll be able to see the big ml platform and for the big ml platform i introduced you to how to upload your data and then which i'll also be running through also here and then how to make prediction and the rest like that so for those of you that just join in uh, to upload the data you can just click here you can see this uh double jump icon you can click here and click upload file then upload you can upload local file any type of file naturally and then so from that data setting which i've shared with you you can click here and then upload so which i've done so i've uploaded and things like that so you can once you've upload you can click on it and see it so i've uploaded it before so that's why you're saying this was the one we used last week so you can click on it once you click on it you can see the different columns that the that our particular model has the different columns that it has so naturally let me click uh what's it called so this is the this is data we we are currently using my internet is a bit slow here so maybe i'll go back to that okay. Okay. So this is the, uh, so these are data, these are columns. We have the gender, the nationality, the place of birth, and the uh, and these are different columns and everything like that that we have. And once we've uploaded it in the source, now we have to move to our data set because that's where the URL will start. So you can come here and say configure data set. And then let me click version two. Let me just put version two here. And then, okay, you can create a new data set from here. But if I do that also, I, I just want to uh, show you something else. You can also uh, change the names. Okay. Let me clone it because I've used it for. You can also change the names of of a particular what's it called of a particular column. You can change it from here. Which we've done. You can see. Let me change it back because uh, so far. So that's that. So big Yama makes things a bit very very easy for you. So. You can come here, edit, and if uh, if you let's say for example you want to yes you want to change the type. So most of these are categorical data types. So categorical means that uh, like uh, the data within it is category in nature, maybe boy girl. Uh, young old or maybe rich poor all those are categorical data or maybe red blue green those are categorical data now numerical data are number based they are continuous in nature nature so you can have one let's say example the salary person end is it will be a numerical data because you can end different ranges of salary you can end one thousand two million you know different ranges so it's not uh category in nature we have text we have date time part region but most of the time you are mostly working with maker or categorical and sometimes text for those of us uh, for those of you that will be interested in building 
uh, NLP model or natural language processing models, which uh, for now will not be going into. So, so we just leave it at categorical because gender is categorical data. And so you can edit all this. So, so that is that. So I can just, uh, I can go back also. So let me just check if there are any questions before I proceed, uh, because we are still. So someone, someone is asking, can we send data set? Yes, I have shared the link to the data set. I will copy it and then share again. Yeah, so yeah, this is the link. Link on the data set. The link on the data set. Oh, someone is saying the link is not clickable. Oh, sorry. What do, what do you mean by it's not clickable? Is it not working? Uh, come, let me confirm. But it should be working. Yeah, the link is working. Just copy the link and then paste to your browser. Copy the link and paste to your browser. Okay, I'm seeing a lot of chat here. Let me open this. I don't know. Yeah, it's working. Just copy it and paste to your browser. Okay, so let's just go back. Now for, so we've done all these and then, so let's just, let's, let's move to the assignment. So the assignment was about decision tree. We should talk about decision tree. And decision tree is a kind of machine learning model. So let me just move this to my data set. So come here, configure data set. So, like I said, we can give it a name version two. Uh, so this will determine the number of or whether you want to use all your data or you want to use part of it. I'm going to use all my data. So if you create data. And then so that is that. So there are some from here you'll be seeing some question marks. These are some of the fields. So it's telling that. It does not think that this field is needed, whether it does not perform any information. So you can remove a field if you think it is not needed in what you are trying to predict. Let's say, for example, you want to predict the price of a car based on the attribute of that car. And then you have a label or you have a column that tells you, okay, this car has sticker on it. This car does not have sticker on it. And you're looking at, okay, I don't think this particular column will be needed for me. Whether, it, it, whether a car has sticker on it or not should not determine the price of the car because once you buy the car, you can peel off the sticker and you can just give it a wash and it will be as good as new. So you might, you, might, you might decide that it's not needed. And then you want to remove that particular column or you don't want your machine learning model to use that particular model, that particular column in its position, you can come here, click on this and say, okay, you can click this. So you say the field is not preferred and you can save it. So once you do that, it gives you a column, a exclamation mark. So all this will not be used for training and for predicting how well your model performs. It won't be used at all. So, that is that. And then one thing also is to determine what we are trying to predict. So the last time we were trying to predict parent student satisfaction. So you come here and you say, okay, this is my target. You can see this target button. Target and label are the same. This is my target, click on it. And then automatically you can, uh, sorry. Oh, I didn't save that. 
go through this is my target and then click save so once you come here you see that okay this is what we are trying to pay end school satisfaction so how satisfied is the parents with the school and then so last class also we also did some other stuff with the data but i won't be going into that now so here is when we are splitting our data into train and test so let's use 70 percent of our training 30 percent and i said it's good to also use to just put a seed a seed here is just to make sure that if anybody else tries to reproduce what you've done the person can do that so so it can be any number for me i just like using 10 because i like 10 and then so it will tell you the name of the train of, the, of your training data set which is this you can change it if you want to tell you the, the name of your test data set which is this you can change it also if you want but i'm not changing it so you can just create training so you can see that it's quite simple so but the important thing is just that you should understand the fundamental of artificial intelligence it's important you understand the fundamental once you understand the fundamental using the no code platform you don't have to code anything you can start just start building your model gradually and gradually so once we have this you can say okay which type of model do you want to build so i told you to use decision tree and in last class i said uh this particular no code tool does not have decision tree but that's ensemble model ensemble is uh i would just i would say it's similar to decision tree it's just a group of decision trees grouped together so ensemble so it's a collection of decision trees so that's what we are using and that's what it does so you just click here and say and say you want your model you can click the over here you can click over here so we just click here and say assemble click on it and then these are the parameters for now you might not be bothered but you can see the objective field this is what we are trying to predict the type decision forest there's boosted trees but let's just stick with the default the number of models let's stick with the default and then you can click on advanced configuration if you really know what you are doing but for now gradually it's step by step and you can see that it's training on our what training data set which was 70 percent of our initial data set and you can just click here and just click create a sample no need of coding no need of programming no need of learning python just simple click drag and drop but mostly yeah, we have job doing clicking 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 so it, and it's as simple as that you're just clicking and clicking and clicking so uh so oh, yeah so all what that is all what that is important for you to know how to do is to be able to understand what are the key key parameters are the key uh um, key stuff to note uh, when building a machine learning model some of the key stuff to note and from there gradually gradually you are improving yourself so this is a graph to see uh, the parent answering survey against decision you can change it you can play with this graph like i've said let's say you want to see the class against the uh the student absent you want to plot the gap against student absent so this is class h lower class medium class so you can see the number of people that were absent uh this under seven so those are the number of times you are absent above seven um, yeah so so you can Play here, plot different graphs, plot different columns against each other. Let me look for a categorical column. So, plot, uh, there's no yet decision. Let's see. I'm trying to change the kind of graph is plotting. 
Yeah, but you can come here and play play with it and see different kind of grab. And uh, yes, probably to yeah, it's good. And see how each aspect, uh, how they perform and everything like that. So, but for that, that's not what we are going to. So we want to evaluate uh, the performance of our model, evaluate and see how well our model is doing. So you can see that it will be evaluating with our test data, which is 30%. And you can just click evaluate to see how well your model performed. So once you do that, you can, yeah. So, so once you do that, you can see the performance, 75% accuracy, 60% recall precision. So all these accuracy is how well your model performed, uh, how well did it put it, uh, did it, put it uh, the good and the bad, you know those things, precision. And all these things as formulas, you can read more about them, but maybe in the new class, we'll talk about some of these evaluation metrics and see how you can use them. But for now, you can just focus on the accuracy and then try to optimize that. Now you can see that your accuracy is 75%. So now the question rests on you. Are you satisfied with 75% or do you want to increase the performance of your model? If you want to increase, what are the actions you have to take? Now that's when you start researching, researching, and that's where your domain knowledge comes in. What are some of the important features that my model should have? Like a teacher now, because this data set has more to do with the educational line, a teacher will be able to know that, okay, these are the particular features that predict if a parent to be satisfied with our performance or if, it, or if a student will perform well in school. Now, the, uh, the teacher will be able to know, okay, these are the data points I need to collect, or this is how I need to improve my model. These are what is lacking and things like that. And then there are some other key things you have to learn in terms of data science that can help you improve your model also, like uh, maybe getting more data or maybe uh, removing some false prediction from your model and things like that. But we'll be going into increasing performance here just to show you how easy it is to move from uh, not knowing anything at all and be able to build a machine learning model that you can predict and everything like that. And then you can, you can make predictions here, yeah? come here to make predictions. And uh, maybe a parent is coming in and you want to see whether the parent will be satisfied with your school performance or not. And then you can, these are some of the columns. You can move them and then impute values here based on maybe the data you have collected from that particular parent or, or that particular teacher. And then you can say, okay, uh, perform. How many times have the student be absent? If the student is absent for more than seven days, how would that affect the performance? And then you can save. Once you save, you can predict. So it's saying it has 73.4% probability that the outcome, that the parents will not be satisfied with that first class to performance and everything like that. And you can show your all what you predicted over time. Yeah. So these are this is a good tool to use. You can make new predictions, you can delete predictions, and you can, so for those of, so, and then you can deploy your model also for, if you are using the paid account, you'll be able to deploy the model. So someone is saying I got 77.8 on my own, so that's nice. So someone is asking, did you go over the creation data set? So the data set was gotten from an external source from Calgo. For those of you that know Calgo, it was only from Calgo. If you are interested, or if you have a data set from your own. Now, creating data set has to do more with domain expertise or what your company, for those of you that work in companies, or what, what are the information you have concerning what you want to track. So that from there, you collect it together and then you'll be able to create a data set.
but someone is saying i don't understand so there's a recording of it so just go by it copy the link i mean uh go go watch the recording again and i'm sure it will be clear so someone is asking for the recording of last class the uh a, the youtube link will be shared with you will be shared in the chat okay uh, so yeah so someone is asking my question is that can this big ml be used professionally like if you are giving a project to do your big ml no code can you do or you do the normal code now professionally like i said most companies do not care uh what tools you use in performing your uh your uh your tax especially if your boss is saying can you build a model for us or can you visualize this data for us most of them don't care don't some of them don't even care about seeing your source code just only tax done so for that one you can use big ml but, but there are some companies that are a bit uh technically oriented and then they would like you to write it in python and things like that so for those ones also you you have to use your python now you can see use big ml to just create like a base model the base model is just like an initial model to see okay how well with this particular based on this particular data set i have how well can it perform and whether it from there to give you a sense of idea of where you are starting from so when you're typing your code you know okay this is my baseline and this is how i can improve and things like that so it depends on your company it depends on but for basic day-to-day -day tasks that don't require you showing your code i would prefer you just use a big ml tool and then i mean it's just a no code tool and then you can you can go on with your life okay so let me see whether we have any questions yeah, so can we get data set yeah the link of data set i've shared i would copy and share it again but uh, yeah the link of data set i've shared link of data set i'm sharing Someone is asking, how do we clean data in big ML? So uh, maybe when, when I'm going into today's case study, I can show you that, how you can clean data. But I think I, I talked about it in last class. So I can. Someone is asking, can we use big ML for deep learning and CNN? So now you can use big ML for text, uh, for text now when you're talking about big ml cnn cnn i don't i i can't really say that that's the strength of big ml the strength of big ml is more about when you are using tabular data set that's where its strength really lies uh, but uh what's it called well you can see that it has deep net here which you can use and it has time series here also which you can use. So these are some of the model stars, deep net time series, which is an example of a CNN also. But based on what uh, what type of tax you want to perform with CNN, big gamma may not be the right tool for you to use. It might not be the right tool for you to use. So downloading printout, uh, yeah, you can do that when you come to your, I'm coming here. So yeah, you can see what flow reports, you can do that also here. Yeah. And also when you come to your models, come here, me... so let me go back to, So let me go back to our data set here. So I can show you 
So you can, there's a lot of printers we can use in case for those of you that are interested in that. So in our ensemble model, you can, Also done, let me show you. So yeah, you can see the example summary report. You can also download, you can download actionable example. This is if you want to deploy it. And so yeah, there are things, a lot of things you can download for them if you want to use it. Yeah, so let's just, uh, Let's move over to the tax of today. And also, so I can join along for those of you that are just coming and then we can run it together also again. So, uh, so we've talked about our assignment. We've talked about, yeah, we've talked about the solution. And then, so for today, we'll be using BigML. So today will be, the case study will be customer shown analysis using BigML. Don't be, don't be scared with the big English at all. It's nothing to be scared about. So uh, what's it called? Shown analysis is just a way of knowing whether a customer will leave you or not. What's probability that a customer will leave you or not? That's what churn analysis, customer churn analysis. And a lot of big firms use it to know, okay, what's probability that this customer within the next one month will probably leave us and then go for our competitors. And if they're able to have this before and they'll be able to bombard that customer with uh, promos and be able to say, okay, we have 50% discount uh, will you uh, uh, buy a product from us and we'll give you free, free delivery and everything like that. So companies use it alone. So this is data set we are using. So I would like you to just go over and then download that particular data set. So, so let me type it to the group chat so you know what we are using. So the difference is just you change the one to a two. So that is the data set. I've typed it on the chart. This is the data set you are using. So you can go over and then make sure you download the data set you are using. So for, for all of you, just go over and download it so we can start. So I'll just wait for a while. Or you can scan the QR code also. Now I'm looking through the chat. If there are any questions I can tackle before we move on. Okay. So if you are having any problem with downloading the data set, let me know. If you have any problem downloading data, so let me know. Okay, yeah, so, um, yes, so let's just move over to BigML again and then work with this particular data set. And then from there, we can uh, move to question and answer. And then I can show you the project I have for you. For you to do. Okay, I think I see some. Trouble. Yeah, copy the data set. Copy it is for you. Copy, edit, transform, play with it is for you. Let's copy the data set. Now, okay, now just know that. For big ML, the starting point you will need is your source for everything you'll be doing. If the initial place to start from is your source, so you go to our source. 
once you are in your source, then you can upload your file that you downloaded. You come here, and then so we are the data set is telco customer churn, and then you upload it here, and then immediately you can see it here telco customer churn dot csv. So as simple as that, your data set is already in here. And then you can see it's telling you that that's 17 categorical data. So, and everything. So it gives like a quick overview of what is within your data. So it's telling you that this is text, this is gender, whether the person is a senior citizen or not, whether uh, the person is a partner or not, Maybe the person is a dependent, dependent is if the person is a children or if the person is too old and then it has some more tenure, the phone service, whether the person has multiple lines, whether the person has internet service, whether the person does online security, online backup. So these are some of the informations we've gotten from our customer. And then this is what we are trying to put it churn, churn to see whether this particular person will leave us or not. So no means the person will not leave. Yes means the person is very likely to leave, very likely to leave. So for, for some of you, so some, for some of you asking how to clean your data set, you can come here, configure source. So configure source. So here you can see if they are missing tokens. These are all what you could classify as missing tokens. Separators, I to separate it. Double quotes. Auto detectors and everything like that. So this is to classify and everything like that. And also, so this is determining whether to have an header or not and everything like that. This is for text analysis to, to tokenize it and everything. Let me uh, let me just cancel it. Uh, I don't have to do much on this. And also, you can yeah. So if we configure your data set from here, you can determine whether you want to pick a particular column or not. So for this customer ID, you don't need it. It's just random text. You don't need it. You can remove it. Uh, for I need gender, I need this. Uh, multiple lines, do I need it? You no, know, just look through and say, okay, do I need this? And then you can create your data set from here. So once you create your data set, you can see that the, uh, so we are now in the data set uh, category. You can see that number one, gen, uh, what's it called? Customer ID has been dropped. So here yeah, you can see different things. So yes, yeah, it's showing that it has category car, and then you can see, you can see uh, what's it called? You can see the, uh, so it's telling that it has 5,901 five uh, zeros one. So these are just uh, graphs and everything. Yeah, you can also see if you have missing values, you can see the mean. So this is just like a quick, uh, what's it called? A quick uh, recap of what you have and everything like that so quick visualization very fast and here we can see specify this is our target this is what we are predicting which is which is specify also you can click save and so that's that so you can see missing value here for those of you that are bothered about to uh, work with missing values or how to manage missing value on BigML, it automatically counts for you based on what we specify as missing value in the source. 
it was much like can for you and then you can see whether you have missing values so here we have some missing values so big ml can take care of that for you let me see So yeah, you can see you move duplicate, you can merge data, you can filter some uh, if you don't want, you can, so you can download your data sets, you can remove it. So a lot of things you can do here, a lot of things you can do, work with, remove duplicate if there's need be. Yeah. So, and then use the scatter plot in case you just want to plot it. You want to do some visualization and see, okay, if I plot gender, let me plot gender against, uh, against conch. This is what I'm predicting. You can see, let me plot, let me change it. So gender, let me do, let me do whether the person has multiple lines or not. You can see, no, yes, and things like that. So let me look for a numerical value to plot. You can see. So a lot of visualization you can do here to see how it works and things like that so let me go back to my table so the beauty about this is you can play around with it and see what you get play around with it and see whether it improves your data set so for the sake of time let me just move to splitting it okay so you split train test split I want 70% instead of 80%. You can put any percentage, then put 75. Remember to put your seed in also, just for, for you to be able to reproduce it. And then you can create your train, your train test split. And it automatically knows that the model you want to build, you want to train it to your train data set, which it will automatically do for you. And then so I can. Uh, uh, uh. So let's use, since it's a classification model we are doing, uh, we've done regression, we've done ensemble. So I'm looking at which other one we can use here. Okay, let's use deep net. Let's use deep net. We are using deep net and then so you can play with some of these in between increase the accuracy of the model and then you can actually create deep net now the missing value does not Affect, you know, we have some missing values there, and I was looking for a way of handling that. But you can see that big ML will automatically handle it for you. Now, if you look deeper into the what's it called, uh, you'll be playing around with some of these values, be able to see whether you want to replace missing value with uh, with uh, zero or with one or with things like that. But I was uh. But because of time, we can't go deep into that one. But you just know if you don't undo it, big M will undo it for you. That one, you know, in Python, if you have missing value to affect your model and things like that. But yeah, that's not the case. So, so you are done. Like I said, you can play around with this. And then you can, let's just evaluate it and see how well our model does. Evaluate. 
just click evaluate and then so the essence of this class is just to create a form of curiosity within you so you can look you can go on your own and then see how well to improve yourself so you got an accuracy of 73.71 you can increase it you got a precision of 92 uh 92 percent we call or 69 percent f1 notice math all these matters and then you can increase you can see whether your model is performing well or not uh and then this is number of no it predicted this is number of no it predicted wrongly this is number of yes it predicted correctly and this is number of yes it predicted wrongly 60 68 so all these are some of the parameters you will be needed so you can see that it's quite simple, very easy to play around with and to work with. Uh, but uh, how do I put it? Uh, the more you train yourself, the more you become better at this over time. So let me just answer some questions before we move to before we move to our capstone project, and then I would. We can call it a day there. We've already used uh, more than an hour. So the first question is from Michael. He said, I want to understand that everything, okay, everything that you can do on big ML site, uh, you can <laughs> you can do a lot on big ML site. You can work with, you can be clarification, regression model. You can work with unsupervised and supervised model and very, very lot also that you can work with. Now, I would advise that you go on big ML. We will search it by yourself, see whether I can work with your own particular use case and then. Okay, someone is saying it's lost because of our time. The YouTube link will be shared so you can rewatch. YouTube, you can watch at your own uh, pace. You can pause and everything like that. Someone is saying, can we change the churn? Yes, you can change the name of the mode, uh, of your column. Uh, you can change that. And someone is asking about graphs. I, I can't even understand why. Uh, someone is asking, after using BKM, can BKM generate your code for you? Yes. But I'm using the free version. I don't think the free version can do that. But I think BigML can generate your code, can generate the code for you or what the processes you've done. So yeah, BigML can do that. You can go search that and let me know that. that. Okay, so is asking, how can I use the information gotten from evaluation to solve the problem? Now, so from evaluation, you can see how well your model is performing. Now, if you are not satisfied with the level of your model performance, you can then uh, take some particular actions, maybe get more data. Maybe this number of data is not enough. Get more data set to train your model or uh, look at some of the trends of your model, which, which of the columns are not needed. So all these things are try and error. Maybe if a column, if uh, the level of correlation of a particular column are similar, maybe you don't need some columns and everything like that. All this can help improve the performance of your model. So how do you handle overfitting? Now, I do. I think big ML will handle the issue of overfitting for you, except if there's what they call data leakage here. Yeah. But uh, generally, big ML will. But if you notice that your model is not performing well on your, uh, how would I put it? On another data set that you are testing it with, maybe when you are making prediction, and you can come here and see some of the uh, hyperparameters you can tune. You know, there are some places that were just living at default. I didn't really go into, but adjust things, play with things and see how well it performs. So yeah. Is big MLA app? Uh, yes, it's a web app. You can use it.
So interpretation of your result is accuracy is uh, how well is over 100. Everything here is over 100. A good model, an ideal model, we have 100 over 100, but naturally you don't see any model that does that. Now, how uh, whether a model is good to go or not determines on what is the benchmark you've set, whether in your company or your organization that, okay, before we can deploy a model, it must have a position of 90, uh, accuracy of eight or the minimum and C and all those things. So, uh, so it just, so how do you adjust the hyperparameter? So they are here. Uh, let me let me go back to here. So so these are the hyperparameters, and then when you were building the model, let me let me build the model again so you can see what I'm talking about. So when, when you want to build the model, it asks you for some parameters. Most of them, I just left it at default. Let's say, for example, I want to build, yeah. So this is deep net. I want to build it again. So these are the hyperparameters, C here. So it's asking me for the train, training duration. These are one example of hyperparameters. It's asking me for the network architecture, the algorithm to use, the weight so all these are what you can play with to see to get a better performance and this advanced configuration also so in advanced configuration you see them you can maximum integration in all those things so you can play with all this to get a desire parameters and this style so uh before we uh, move over to our project I think let's just move ahead. Let's just move ahead and then, so we've done a bit of question and answer. Let me talk about the uh, capstone project. So if there's enough time, you can do question and answer. I think that should work. So also remember to join our community. So for those of you that are just starting and you're a bit confused, join our community watch the video. There are a lot of other classes you can join to help uh, guide you throughout this process. So that was also that. So our capstone project, like I said, you know, I want you to build like a credit card fraud detection system using BigML. I'll be giving you the data set. So all what you just have to do is just to submit a one page document align, outlining the steps you took using BigML to build this particular fraud, credit card for detection system. Just a one page document. So uh, your data set, you should split it 70, 30. For, for those of you that are following, you should, you should not have a problem with that. Split it 70, 30, and then use a seed of 10. Like I said, I like 10. Now I'll be copying this link and then putting it in the chat. So this is your data set. So I will spend a lot of time here. This is your data set. And so you just, uh, the link will be shared with you, your email, but I'll also be copying the link and sharing it here. So this is data set. Yeah, the slide will be available. The slide will be available, definitely available. Uh, sorry, I got the invite late. Okay, for those of you that got the invite late, the YouTube link will be shared with you, so you don't have to worry about that. The YouTube link will be shared with you. Uh, yeah, so uh, this is the link. You can copy it or save it somewhere. This is the link for the capstone project that I'll be using. Yeah, okay. So in the tele there's also a telegram group also. You get your materials there. Uh email will be shared with the slide. The telegram group also for so I think a link of the telegram group has been shared. So join our we have a community also join and then 
if you have an issue also you can send an email to to community okay okay, okay. so and, and then an attendance link have been shared I, I i want my colleagues to be share some of this link an attendance link i've shared also so in case just feel the attendance also so we can have your email uh, and then we can share some information with you also so but just copy the link to the data set and uh, it should help guide you along also uh, so so remember you split the data set 7030 if you have any question just type it in the chat i'm looking at the chat so what does the data set contain so it contains uh the uh the credit card informations of some people some features of how to detect the credit uh what's called uh, sorry of how to detect uh fraudulent transaction now those features have been random uh, have been uh randomized so that people's information don't link on the web so now what you are mostly likely going to be seeing are numbers i will show you a sample of the data set and things like that now don't be bothered about the time stamp don't be bothered i've not talked to you about time series don't be bothered about the time stamp just treat it as look at the columns and when I choose it as a as a logist, uh, logistic regression or build a model about it, and just sample, just look at it individually, and then just take some steps. All the steps you take in the class, just build a model around it and see, uh, and, and see how well you perform, and see how well you perform. And now someone is asking about metadata. Uh, you don't need that for now, for this capstone, you don't. You might need it for your report, but uh, I don't think you need that. So I won't, I'll be sharing that with you. So where do you submit? Don't worry, I'll tell you where to submit. So now I'll just copy the link of the data set again, and then we can proceed. So I've pasted the link of the data set in the chat. Yes, so so now the capstone project. I will I would like that at least the you must attach one image to it, and is the image of your evaluation stage. I would like to see your accuracy, your precision, your recall, and the rest like that. Uh, so so just a screenshot of this. Uh, just like the image beside it, a screenshot would be okay. Just screenshot it, attach it to your document, and then share it, share it. You know, I told you that it must be a one-page document. Just, uh, just make sure that you uh, compile into one page. If it's more than one page, you can say send, but I appreciate if it's one page so I can read through and uh, everything like that. So you just structure, just like you are giving me a report of how you Done it. Let's say, for example, your boss, your boss give you a particular data set and say, okay, I want to report on this particular data set. You just do that. But at least I would like that a screenshot of your evaluation stage is attached to that document. So that would help also. Make sure that a screenshot, I would like to put that a screenshot of the evaluation, evaluation stage is attached to that document. Let me read some questions. Wrong. Yeah, so yes, there are some few names for the link. I will show you. We would look, we we'll do like a, a quick uh, glance of the data set here. Yeah. yeah. And then, yeah, now to submit, you must submit to this email. Just send an email called project participation at datasign.ai. For those of you asking, where do you submit project participation at data science.ai? Okay, so I, I would like to change this date so as to give you more time. So 
you can submit by uh, i'll give you an extra of one week after the deadline also an additional one week after the deadline so a grace period of one week addition after the deadline you can still submit so that will be on the 7th of august but the deadline i would like you to work towards first of august it's not a difficult project like that but i would like you to work towards the first of august Someone is asking for the link of the Telegram group again. Let me look for that and copy it for you. Oh. Okay, so let's just do a quick overview of, of the data. So you have like a quick idea of what you have to do. So let, let's go to your source, your source. For those of you that have downloaded the data and you just upload it now. And then we have, you okay? Now, like I said, most of the field have been randomized. So as to protect because credit card information and sensitive information. So you won't expect me to be putting people's credit card numbers here or you have access to that no. That is not that. So you can see that's time series. So all these have been randomized. They have been randomized, so you don't know what they are. You don't know what it stands for and everything like that. So that is not a problem. So you can, so the first thing I would advise you to do is to increase this field to like 50. So you can see everything. So this is what we are predicting, the class. The class is what we are predicting. So know that. So zero means is not fraudulent. One means is fraudulent. Zero means is not fraudulent. One means it is fraudulent. And this is the amount the person transfer is in dollars. The amounts are in dollars. But all these other information are being randomized so that you don't have uh, people's personal information with you and things like that. So, so, uh, so that is that. And so this is what you are trying to put it like I've shared, said earlier. And then you can work with it. You know what you have to do. You have to do this and this, split your data set, train your model. You now, you can determine the type of model to use. Maybe regression, maybe deep net, maybe a sample based on you. And you can use different models also to see which one gives you the best performance. It's also an idea. It's something that I would like to do. And then you can play around some particular columns, adjust some hyperparameters, have some parameters and see how well you perform overall. So these are some, you can see I'm giving you some tips now. So it's, it's not something that is very, very difficult. It's not something that is very difficult. So remember that you have to uh, send an email to project participation. At, let me just type it here for those of you. Project participation at data science. Nigeria. Yeah. Yeah. So, so just send an email to that place, and then I will pick it up. Once you send the email, I would acknowledge. I will get, and then I will, sh based on your report, I will share some tips with you on how to improve your performance. So, uh, which model are we going to use? So you can use any model. You can use any model. It's based on your discretion. You can use any model. Any model that gives you the best performance, you can use any model. Okay, so I think we've come to the end of the class today. 
So thanks everyone for joining. So if you have any other questions before you go, you can just drop it and then I would quickly look about it. Question description. Hmm. I, I don't understand what you mean by question description. So if you have questions, just drop it. Thanks everyone. Eric, thanks. Thanks for joining. Know that you are just to submit a one page document of the different steps you took in order to perform this project. The project is about credit card, uh, detecting fraudulent transactions in credit card uh, transaction and the rest like that. So, so thanks everyone. I don't think we have any additional questions. Thanks, thanks for joining. I look forward to seeing you also in the next two weeks. In the next two weeks, we'll be looking at another no code two entirely. We would leave Big ML and move on to another no code two entirely. Uh, so if you have any idea of any no code platform you want us to try, you can share it with me or send it to the email or send it to any of our Twitter and do and any of our Twitter posts and just share, give us some ideas of some platforms that you, are, that you like to learn. Uh, so is there a limitation with BigML concerning the data size? So it depends. If you are using the uh, free platform, I think the, uh, the, uh, the largest kind of model you can uh, upload is, I think, 16 MB. But if you are using the paid, I don't think there's any limitation. So the next class should be in the next two weeks. Yeah, that would, yeah, in the next two weeks. The next class should be in the next two weeks. The next class should be in the next two weeks. Okay, so thanks for joining. I think we're gonna call it a day here. Nice. See you in the next two weeks. And if you have any question, just ask on the Telegram group and then uh, we'll attend to you. Bye.